And uh, welcome to how to create a sustainable writer mastermind group version 2.0. <laughs> we are all so happy to be here. And I see there's so many people in the comments um, that I will shout out. But um, first, I wanted to introduce myself and introduce all the rest of the uh, mastermind group. And then um, we'll kind of go into what a mastermind group is. Um, just kind of quick uh, rundown of a mastermind group. Um, but we did do a video in our first year, I believe, um, of our mastermind group, which I do have linked down below, as well as these lovely ladies' uh, social media platforms. So please give them a follow and um, check out that video because there'll probably be some um, good tidbits that we won't cover in here. Um, but if you're uh, tuning in for the first time and don't know me, I am Wright Holly Davis. Um, all across the interwebs. I'm a kidlit writer working on a YA fantasy um, that I'm hoping to traditionally publish. And I'm also the host of the Diversity is Lit book club. Um, and I have a lovely uh, co-host right there. Um, <laughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Alicia Grumley, and you can find me on YouTube and Instagram as writer Alicia Grumley. And I am a blessed co host of the Diversity is Lit um, book club that we have read. And Holly's been hosting that for about a year now, a little over like a year and a half. And I write poetry, I write nonfiction, I do a little bit of YA fantasy. It's kind of a what do I not dabble in? Um, but poetry is kind of the, the strong lead for me there. Um, and I am working on a, uh, new adult contemporary, which was my nano project from this past November. So that's, that's all that. And I'm so glad to be here with you all tonight and to be here with my mastermind group because I love these ladies and it's, it's always fun when we get to chat. I know I was about to do that too. <laughs> We do this all the time when we're like signing off for our meetings. <laughs> we're all like on our phone, so it's like half. Oh, yeah, it's like half. Half. Thank you. yeah, we didn't talk about our hand signals now. <laughs> Brittany, you want to go next? Oh, sure. Um, hi, everybody. I went to say hi, guys, and everybody at the same time. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Brittany Wang. Um, I am a YA fantasy writer, and very recently, within last year, finally published um, author. Actually, this is my first book on Wings of Ash and Death. I'm kind of proud of her. And um, I also am in this group with these wonderful ladies, which has been life-changing. And um, I also uh, help writers uh, build their author websites through my author website bootcamp course. And I also have a YouTube channel, so you can check me out uh, here as well. And I'm Savannah J. Goins. I'm the author of these books, which you can't see super well. This is the first one. This is the Gwythinian trilogy. And um, I am just so blessed to be in this group with this, these ladies. I wrote, I published most of the trilogy since we started meeting together and I've grown so much and I can't wait to talk more about it so that hopefully you guys can start one too if you're interested in it. I actually started the group and am just so happy with how it has turned out. I'm so happy that you guys didn't turn me down. <laughs> I was nervous asking you all, but this has just been the greatest thing. So thank you guys. <laughs> thank you for starting it. <laughs> yeah, you're the best. <laughs> so let's see who's here. Jennifer was here first, bright and early. Happy Tuesday. Happy March uh, 1st. So we've survived. I'm doing March month because it's birthday month as of now. <laughs> any, any March babies in the comments? Yay. Say hello. So. Wonderful. It's my cat's birthday today. Yay, oh, Oliver's Oliver. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you want, I shared some fun little tidbits about him and his adoption journey, um, which is really fun um, on my Instagram, if you want to check that out, because it's it was kind of cute. Um, and JJ's here. Hello. Deb, hello. Happy to see you all. And Maya's here. Hi. Allie. Hello, hello. 
Yay, so many fun people. It's a good group. Um, yeah, we got a good group. I'm seeing some names that I'm familiar with, so that's exciting. <laughs> and, and I'm seeing uh, ones I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And I know depending on time zones, we might be too early or too late for some people. So if you are watching the replay, please let us know in the comments. And if you do have any questions, um, I do respond to all my comments. So even if we don't get to it on the live stream, I will be here for you. <laughs> um, Jennifer says, I'm a March baby. <laughs> my husband since World Market gave me a discount. That's good for the whole month. So that means I get the whole month for my birthday. Oh, yes. that's dangerous. I'm in. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryder, uh, Ryder Ski's here. Hello. And Heather's here. Heather. Hi, Heather. I was wondering if we might get to see Heather. Hi. Wonderful. Um, yeah, between her and my like mastermind group, it's wonderful. Um, so like I said, we had a live stream um, in our first year, um, but we just passed our three-year mark, our three-year anniversary. And so that's why we wanted to do this live stream because a lot has changed since we last did that live stream. So we knew we had like a lot of good insights to share about like how we've grown in our rider journey and in our lives, how we're different from when we started. Um, and so we want to talk about that and talk about what we've learned and how we've changed and adapted the group to kind of fit these changes um, and things that we didn't really expect. And while we were brainstorming this, we were like, oh yeah, well, and we do this now and that now, and it just kind of happened naturally. So we want you guys to um, be able to um, create your own writer mastermind groups and find success and make it sustainable because we found so much value in mastermind groups. Um, so Teresa, uh, yeah, Teresa's here. Another of our co-hosts for diversity is lit author T.A. Beasley yes. is here. Teresa. Barrett, Barrett is my middle grade buddy. Hello. Hey, Barrett. <laughs> and Teresa, another diversity is lit co-host. Wonderful. Um, oh, and Maya remembers the first live stream. That's wonderful. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Thanks for watching again, Maya. Yeah, seriously. Yes. So um, I might butcher the, the what is a mastermind group de definition. Um, but, I'm sure we can help you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's us, we're the mastermind group, but pretty much, um, you know, uh, mastermind groups kind of started as more of like a business um, type venture where like entrepreneurs um, would get together with um, a group and they would meet at a set time and day and discuss their ideas and get feedback from people um, to try to like work on their projects or businesses. Um, so we kind of repurposed that to work on our author platforms and our author businesses and our writing ventures um, to, yeah, to succeed and meet our goals. So. <laughs> Because you can't exist in a vacuum is kind of like the whole point of that, right? You need feedback and you need feedback from other professionals in your field and you need chances to grow and you need to hear some other voice that's not just your voice in your head saying, I am a bad writer. I'm never going to have enough of a following. I'm never going to publish this. You need a different set of voices other than that negative voice that sometimes overrides things. So that is also what yeah. the matter is. And Survey. then, like, you know, the more minds you have, what what did we used to call our like the call, fifth like, brain? We're the fifth, fifth brain. brain. Fifth all, brain yeah. all of us together, we yeah. we are the fifth brain. So right. you know, we gain so many ideas and feedback from each other, um, and it's so much more powerful than if it was just ourselves. I always think of us too as like we're all friends, but we're all kind of like coworkers, you know. Too like we don't we don't actually like go into an office and whatever, but like we're constantly, um, besides like our weekly meetings, we're like on Marco Polo. If you guys know the app where you can video chat to each other and send messages back and forth, so we're doing that like on the daily. So we've like mini, mini mastermind kind of throughout the week and checking in with each other. And um, I don't know if like maybe Savannah wants to like run down how the usual like meeting part goes. Uh, Cause I think you formatted that really well when we got started. 
Yes. So I stole the format from a podcast or something that I had heard that was talking about like how um, Holly had talked about it originally with um, entrepreneurs. So usually it's just it's one hour. And the way that it works is you don't go over all of everybody's stuff every week. So for 10 minutes, we talk about our goals from last week, whether we made or not. And this is a speed round. We're not always good at this, but we try to go really quickly through our goals and say what we did or what we didn't do, extra things we did, because it's important to um, remember the things you do accomplish and not just focus on everything you don't get done because then that's really discouraging all the time. So we focus on our goals for the first 10 minutes. And then the last 10 minutes, we mention our goals for next week. But that middle 40 minutes is, belongs to one person per week. And that person is in the hot seat. And that is the person who gets to present um, an idea or a question or something that they're that's something that they're trying to work on. <clears throat> something they're working on and they want feedback on and that person is in the hot seat for that night they have 40 minutes to talk about stuff get feedback from us and um we have like a set order um so we go in the same order every week but we're flexible with it if somebody has nothing we might like if i have nothing i might offer up hey does anybody want my spot this week i'll trade with somebody because we we want to be sure that we're being fair to everybody but we don't want to be so rigid that it's not useful because if i have nothing to present because i'm too busy on other stuff and i haven't started anything new or made progress on something then there is no reason to waste time with it so we try to make sure that we're using being putting our time to best use that we can. And sometimes we'll swap things around if we need to. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. I think that flexibility is what has served us really well mm -hmm. um, in our group because like we've had a lot of changes um, and a lot of changes recently that have, um, you know, made us have to be flexible um, with things. So, you know, kind of how we're, different now than when we started is we know each other so much better now. Um, like we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and can call each other out on things and that we weren't able to do before. Like, just like you said, like Brittany said, we're coworkers and we're friends in a sense. Um, so it's not just this like cut and dry, like we're meeting and that's, and then we're like not talking again until next week. Like throughout these three years, we've, we've also built up our friendship as well. And we've become each other's beta readers and critique partners. So it's kind of like evolved into something that's like been so much more valuable than we initially thought it would be. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Um, I so want to give a quick shout out because uh, JC is here and I know she had been in my writing sprints and was curious about the mastermind group. So I'm glad to see you here, JC. Uh, I'm super curious too, because I know there's some people in the comments that have started their own mastermind group since we had that live stream. Mm -hmm. So like, as we're talking about ours, like, feel free to share, you know, how it's been you know, what has been helpful for you or if you've structured yours differently. Because I right. think some people, um, I was actually re-watching the first live stream that we did and some people were asking, you know, because we were saying, oh, we talked a lot about like writer business, um, you know, but people can totally use this for um, like sort of like a, a critique partner group. You know, they could use it for more of like just growing in your writing or doing stuff like that too. So I feel like there's so many different ways you could use it. Yeah. And Maya made a good point. She said, we're lucky to have found each other. It can be really hard to find a lasting CP or mastermind group. And Maya, I totally agree with you. It is hard to do that. And, you know, it's a little bit of luck and a little bit of everybody being in the right place at the right time. And when you find that uh, uh, dynamic that works well, you strive to protect it. Like we're talking about that flexibility, that flexibility stems from this is incredibly valuable to all of us. We all place the same level of value on this mastermind group. And so we are flexible because we would rather be flexible than lose the input that we're getting from each other. Yes. So I say stick with it. And one of the things that Savannah did that she might be able to like link out, we might be able to link, Holly might be able to link it later. She um, made sure we all were willing to sign a contract when we first started, which we may have even talked about in that first video. But that is a valuable thing, I think, too, because it makes you take yourself and everyone else in the group more seriously. Um, yes. You know, and it's saying like it was just like basic things like we were never going to steal each other's ideas. We were never going to talk about an idea that wasn't ours in a place that wasn't ours to talk about. You know, like we were just 
really laying that groundwork of respect. And I think every single one of these women on this call has went above and beyond that a hundred times over. And that's where the friendship comes in. You know, the friendship comes in because we all respect each other. But if you don't know each other, like I know Savannah personally, and I now know Holly personally, but this is kind of a fun tidbit. Brittany and I still have not met in person and we talk <laughs> almost every day. You know? It's happen. <laughs> yeah, we still have not met in person. So we um, are friends. But it's so funny because we are virtual friends for now, you know, and one of these days that's going to change and I can't wait to give you a great big real hug. But you know, like if you don't know the people well, or if you don't know them, like everyone in your group a little bit, Maya, it might be helpful to kind of have a base contract so that you can all be on the same page of what your expectations are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want me to elaborate on that contract a little bit? Yeah. I'm so to it's find it too. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I wish I would have thought about that beforehand. Um, no, you're but fine. It's, I'm looking while we're okay. talking. <laughs> Thank you. It's called an NDA or a non disclosure form. So, this is something that usually is used between companies saying, like, who owns what, but also saying, most importantly, that the people who learn secrets about each other are not going to dispel them, which sounds really funny. Secrets about like uh, projects or secrets about, um, you know, stuff that's in the works, things that you're making so that nobody steals your ideas, basically. So a non-disclosure form just means you're not going to steal somebody else's idea. So it's... Um, I found it, but it's not, it's like on Doc Hub and it's not, yes. um, it's like 404 error page. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, well, okay, so here's... Right here. Here. Here's the thing. Doc Hub is it's free for at least a few uses a month. And so that's why I used it at the time, because I couldn't afford to have like a, a regular signing software or anything. So I used it because it, it gave you two or three a month. So I was able to get all of you guys to sign it and I signed it um, all for free. Um, so I, I don't we would have all downloaded them. So I would say that it's still worth doing because you'll still have the signed form, even if the software doesn't keep it forever. Um, but the DocuSign or, or DocHub and then DocuSign is the Google version, which I think you also get a few free ones with that. So you could potentially use both of them in one month if you needed to get a few people to sign it um, and then just download those forms after people sign it so that if you're using the free one and they delete it after a while because they don't want you taking up space on them when you're not paying for it, then um, you can just download them and you'll that way you'll still have them on file. Mm -hmm. And um, Maya and Teresa, I know you both are saying that you're still looking for a group. Maybe it would be worth like finding and maybe people in the comments can say like, hey, I'm interested and you guys can, you know, connect with each other. But maybe it'd be worth like trying like a two month setup of meeting weekly. And then, you know, like you could reevaluate after those two months. Like, yeah, this is working for me. This is working in our dynamic, you know, and like see if you want to go forward from there, because that's something these ladies are always really good about reminding me about. Like, we don't have to stick in the same thing we've been doing all the time. You know, like we can try it and you can try it for a little while. And if it doesn't work, then be done with it, you know, or like, you know, separate your ways. And you could even sign something for a two month, like we agree to a two month trial period and go on there because I think you might want more than a month. And the, I, the girls may agree or disagree with me, but I think you may want more than a month. So everybody gets more than one round of feedback. That's why I was thinking too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two or three probably would be good. Right. I started another mastermind group for a different area of interest and that one fell apart, <laughs> but it did last about two or three months. And by the time we were done, we were all very sure that it was not, it was just not going to work out for us. Um, so that happens sometimes and that's okay. But that, you know, it was a good amount of time to see for sure if we all were going to be able to help each other in the yeah. ways we needed help. Yeah, I, I had a couple of interesting to hear. Oh, sorry, Brittany. I was no, gonna, no, no, I was gonna actually call on you to like, because I know you have another mastermind group too that you're a part of. So kind of yeah. talking about your decision to start that and how that's different. I think that'll be really interesting too, since like sure. Savannah started, you know, tried to do hers. Yeah. Well, and I think too, I was just gonna add that, like Savannah, you know, you and Holly were really close and like you and Alicia knew each other pretty well. And I think we knew each other, but like it, we weren't like super close yet. And so I think, but I think because the, 
the foundation of the group for the most part started out as like we're already friends we already talk we already have trust in a relationship like i think that that probably really helped i don't know savannah with your other group if like that wasn't quite there it was more of a group that like came together because out of like desire but not necessarily friendship yes. first Yes, they were all absolutely strangers. Right. <laughs> we so had just I, taken the same course together. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll just see if anybody in the group is interested in this. And yeah. of the people that were it, um, you know, they, it, we weren't going in the same direction enough. <laughs> right, right. And so, yeah. I mean, like, I think sometimes you can do stuff with friends too, and it doesn't quite work out because you're all like, loosey goosey and like, yeah, whatever, we can do whatever. <laughs> um, but I think there's, it's, you can like, I think with the other group that I have, it started out with just me and one other person being like, hey, like, what if we were just more intentional? What if we were just more like checking in with each other? We we're already Marco Poloing and like we we're already critique partners. So we were just like, OK, like, what if we just do more of this? And then with the third person, it kind of organically happened because we started like all three of us talking outside of just talking about having a mastermind group and we're already like kind of sharing ideas and kind of like here and there asking each other opinions and then it was just like do we just want to make this official <laughs> you know we kind of like fell into it but it it wasn't like um as formal as like savannah emailing all of us another um option is like if you already have some chemistry with a couple people you already are sensing you have similar goals or you're already like kind of checking in with each other anyway then it's like hey do you want to do this a little more frequently, even if it's every other week, you know, it doesn't even have to be on video. It can be like, Hey, we're going to meet on Instagram DM for an hour, you know, or Facebook messenger for an hour um, or texting or whatever. And it can just be with one other person you really get along with. And then maybe like a few weeks later, one of you thinks, Oh, you know, I have this other person, you know, that I think would really drive with our group. Like, what do you think about inviting them to like join us and try it out? Um, so it, it can kind of, I think also kind of evolve into maybe similar to what we what we have but um like starting out small and starting with people you really have like chemistry with and like jive with and um trust already you know yeah i think that's important because you know we ask for each other's opinions even on you know sometimes we'll throw a thumbnail up and be like this one or this one and we're like yeah pick that one so it's like we're <laughs> trusting you and going with it you know so right. um, that that adds a lot of value too, mm -hmm. um, and, and from from talking on Marco Polo, um, you know we we found the value in that too to kind of supplement our mastermind because like we said like we try to stick within the timeline but because we are all friends it can tend to go over so um, you know we're like we'll you know we'll we'll be talking we're like hold that thought I'll I'll just talk about this on Polo like right. I'll see you in the Polo sometimes that's how we'll end and our sessions, like see you in the polos, um, yeah. <laughs> because that allows us to kind of further get feedback. So we've kind of made it so that like, we're getting more out of it, like on the off days as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I really like what, um, I don't know if I'm going out of order of what we wanted to talk about, but yeah, I really fine. like- We're all over the place, it's good. <laughs> it's more my conversation. I think that's better anyway. <laughs> definitely. The uh, So at the end of the year, there's holidays, there's, like, you know, we're all in different places and have different schedules. So um, I can't remember if it was one person's idea or if it was just like whatever. But like at the end of the year, we kind of have a little bit more flexibility. We don't necessarily meet every single week. And then we do something really cool to like kind of encourage us. I know I'm going to let somebody else kind of explain it because I feel like maybe Alicia or somebody will do a better job. But <laughs> I really love what we do at the end of the year to kind Without of like, the crying. Is that that's right? Because right? <laughs> you, you didn't think I would cry explaining it. You, you could throw some Alicia-isms in there. Yes, yes. Do it, do it. <laughs> so um, I think Savannah had suggested it. Um, we do kind of like a, like a quality time, words of affirmation, hey girl, you rocked it this year, end of the year wrap up. And we set that date and then we all start kind of thinking, there's usually like a week or two between like when we have that meeting and when NaNo ends because most of us participate in NaNo every year. And so it gives us kind of time to switch gears. And we think about like, what do I wanna talk about that I accomplished this year? And that serves two purposes, right? That serves to highlight, like Savannah was saying earlier, that you don't just dwell in this negative and that you can remember the things that you did. 
and it serves to remind your group members of things that you were proud of that you accomplished this year. And um, so we kind of go through that and we it's usually a little bit of a longer meeting. That meeting is usually about an hour and a half to two hours because we give anybody as much time as they want to talk about their accomplishments and to talk about the things that they felt like they um, overcame. It's not just the accomplishment. You know, it's like I was in this writing rut and I was there for months and I'm finally out of it and I'm out of it happily and I'm working again and I'm drafting again. And, you know, so it's, we don't put a time limit on that as much because it's genuine and it's authentic and we want it to be that way. And then after the person has listed all of their accomplishments and things that they're most proud of this year, we go around like the other three members will go around and say, like, I was really impressed with how you did this. I'm so proud of you for this, you know, and just continuing to pour back into the members of your group that give you so much throughout the year, you know, that they, you just say like, Brittany, like I was so impressed with the way that you put out this cereal this past year. And Holly, I was so impressed with the way you finally came with the drafting and Savannah, I'm so impressed with the way that you left your job, your full-time job to do this writing life full-time. And those were all real things that happened last year. I wasn't just making those up, right? Like, but like I'm good on the fly, but those were real. <laughs> so it's just kind of a um, really filling evening. And it's a really nice way to end the year because, you know, we can't all celebrate the holidays with each other in person, but you know, I, maybe you've all heard me say at some point that like Christmas is a lifestyle. It's not just a holiday. It's a lifestyle for me because <laughs> we're the most generous and loving and giving at Christmas. And that's how I want to be year round. So it is a real tangible way to wrap up a year and say like, yeah, we've worked really hard. Now let's celebrate and let's celebrate each other because more than anything, we are a support system. We're a safety net for each other. And you know, we do trust each other to be honest. And because Savannah has always made this point too, like I would rather know now in the safety of this group, if something isn't working before I send it out into the world and make myself look like a fool or, you know, like make <laughs> these mistakes that were preventable. Right. So right. it's, it's just a way to kind of reinforce the foundation. Like, yes, yeah. we are absolutely friends. But, you know, like I, Brittany didn't know me from Adam when we started this and Holly and I weren't as close, but we like kind of knew each other. So it was really just good timing on everybody's part. And, you know, I like, didn't know you before, like, cause I remember no. I was like, yeah, I'm going to bring my friend in. And I'm like, yeah. sure, cool. Yeah. Like, she's like, really I'm excited really to join. How are you guys feeling about it? But I didn't know you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Heather says, love that so much. And thank you. And Allie says, I love the positivity yeah. of that. It's so helpful to actually remember the wins and have that confirmed by members of the group. Um, I have started a couple questions um, and, and comments I saw, but I wanted to kind of segue into this because what Alicia was talking about is kind of a point that I wanted to make about um, and kind of what Allie's saying, having that confirmed by the members of your group because um like last year was really really rough for me like it was like forget 2020 <laughs> 2021 was so much worse i could not wait for for 2022 because um i just got in my own head i had lots of mental health issues it was just really really rough um and like this group helped me get through all of that because i didn't feel judged if I didn't accomplish my goals. And there were so many, I remember there were so many weeks where like, I was just carrying over like the same goal to the next week. Yep. Still need to do that. Yep. Still need to do that. And it's like, I didn't have to like, feel like they didn't make me feel like a failure. So I didn't feel like a failure to be in those ruts. Um, and like, so I just felt really encouraged and supported and loved by these girls. So, um, so, you know, I can't like, express my gratitude enough but you know that helped me remember that i can take like baby steps if i have my like a really lofty goal so when i wasn't hitting that like bigger goal that i kept carrying over hey let's break that up into good better best goals so like you can make it a little bit more manageable um and so then at the end of the year it was like then going through and seeing wait i did accomplish this and this and this and this i right. didn't like 
get this thing done, but I did all these other things. So mm -hmm. um, it, it really, really helped um, in, in bigger ways than I could imagine. So, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, let's see, Sherry said, I find it so difficult to show anyone my work before it's done. I don't think I could ever find a group who would want to wait a year to see my finished draft. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think that that's a problem at all because that's how long it took me to hit my goal and finish editing my draft. It took me a year. Um, and, you know, you could get feedback on other things. Hey, like, I'm really stuck on this chapter. How can I break through this? Or, you know, I, I'm, I haven't finished this draft yet. I don't know what to post on, you know, Instagram. Like, how do I make my, you know, make people want to follow me um, because I'm not done with this yet? Or, you know, something like that, or even just encouragement. So there's so many other things um, that value I think you can get out of it. Um, right. Yeah, because I think she's probably imagining that we all share like parts of our writing during each meeting. And it's more like, like Holly was saying, like our overall goals. So like throughout the year, you can just share, you know, some of the things like Holly said, or just like, okay, like I'm trying to, you know, edit a certain amount of words, or I'm trying to make a marketing plan, or I'm trying to, you know, um, beef up my characters, you know, and um, just having that accountability and that encouragement is like mm -hmm. life changing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think too, um, what Maya is saying with like the writing blocks for a month or more. So that's another reason why we have flexibility is like, um, so actually I have right here, I write down our goals. So I'm the scribe. <laughs> um, and you know, so you could see like Alicia had one, Brittany had four. Um, and so it's like, there's sometimes where we have one goal. And it's to like finish reading a book or post a YouTube video um, or script a video. And there's some times where it's like, hey, finish this, you know, finish this draft and do this and do this and do this. So like there's flexibility within our goals too of like, it doesn't even have to be like writing related. It could be writerly or writing adjacent as Alicia says. Um, oh yeah, you know, should I explain that better real quick? Oh, yes. Everybody doesn't know. <laughs> so I, um, went to a conference a couple years back when I first started taking myself very seriously as a writer and I won like a free coaching call and I was like well like I just am like getting started in this writing thing so we kind of brainstormed and we came up with ideas that we termed writing adjacent and I've like latched onto this phrase and I use it all the time now so writing adjacent team is anything that is literally what it sounds like it's what makes me a better writer without pen to paper or fingers to keyboard. It's the reading. It's the mastermind groups. It's the critique. Oh no, no, oh, no. Alicia. No. This sometimes happens during our normal meetings. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be back. Flexibility. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's never that abrupt. Usually she just like freezes or something. Right, right. Oh man. Um, well, hopefully Should that be, makes sense. Here she is. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Hi. I'll put you back in her. Let's let's shuffle. Oh. I that's <laughs> that. It's all the um. It's all the professional development that I do that makes me a better writer. That's not the actual writing of things. Um. So yeah, like this this counts as writing the Jason team for me because. I was going to say, oh, watching this video. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Brace over. I love it. Um, oh, Heather F to hop off. Bye, Heather. Bye, Heather. Thanks for having us, Heather. Bye. Um, uh, let's see. Here, where is it? Um, Oh, yeah. Frida, I love the Positivity Girls Foster. That's how creativity thrives, and it shows in all the things you all achieve. Um, Thanks, writing can be such an isolating thing at times, even with this community. And that's very, very true. Um, mm -hmm. people are having some great insights here. Uh, Sherry says, I think we all fall into the all or nothing trap sometimes. I know I do. I love that you can talk about writing and not just how many words did I get? Yeah. Oh yeah. So much <laughs> more than that. 
Definitely. The only time I count words is November or April and July. If I'm doing like something specific for camp nano, but I'm, I'm not a word counter. They know they're like, Alicia, how many words you get? I'm like, I don't know. You're really good at tracking your hours though, right? Have you talked about that? I have, but that is part of the adjacent chain. So the I track hours put into writing per month and I track writing and adjacent chain both towards a very specific goal of 10,000 hours because once you hit 10,000 hours at any given hobby, you're considered a master at it. Um, and it's usually like a 15 to 30 year uh, range of how long that time kind of takes to accumulate. Um, and I'm coming up on my five year <laughs> tracking and I'm hunting down 1700 tracked hours. I'm hunting it down. The right anniversary is actually Friday. So I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna try real hard. And the, I mean, I think, Anybody that's seen me on this call or any of the other calls, we talk about the Enneagram. We love the Enneagram here, right? Like I am your typical eight wing seven. So I see it and it's probably going to happen, but it's going to be tough. Alicia's recently has been calling me out on my, I'm a two wing one. And she's like, your one is showing. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's like the perfectionist. So I'm just like, Leave me alone. <laughs> so it's kind of cool because that's something that we learned in 2021 was the Enneagram. And um, Brittany has a really great YouTube video about um, using the Enneagram to create characters. And so that it was like, oh, this is helpful for characters and ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if, if you like a wing seven, so if you like me in real life or on the screen, check out Brittany's book because her main character may share some, may share some Enneagram. <laughs> <laughs> similarities uh, um let's see oh this is a great question that teresa has um when you uh, uh, savannah when you approach the ladies where were you looking for writers that write in the same genre as you do okay mm. so in this case because i was looking for a writer's business mastermind group so more with a focus on how we were turning our writing into businesses or you know not not just critique partner kind of stuff i didn't actually focus on people who wrote in the same genre as me although you do all write fantasy at least some just <laughs> that just was a happy me. accident i guess um i think if you're looking for a critique partner or a group that you're going to critique each other's work in particular it might be helpful to have people who are also in the same genre because they'll know about tropes and world building and they'll, they'll have maybe some deeper insights than someone who writes in a different genre than you might but if you're looking for a group that's going to be talking about like writing adjacent things and the the craft of writing or making writing into a business more so the genre wasn't super important to me in that case i was looking for people who i admired what they were doing i liked them as a person as much as i knew them because i i didn't want to work with someone who I, you know, had, had rubbed me the wrong way or like left like kind of a negative impression with me. Um, so I looked for people who I thought my personality would mesh well with and people who I admired. And that was how I picked my people. <laughs> my people. We admire you too. Yeah, well, thank you. Do. <laughs> 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 And I think too, and this is just fresh in my mind because I just watched the first inter or interview, Q and A we did or whatever. But Savannah, you had mentioned too that you know there was some sense of like with each of us, like a little bit of jealousy in some areas. Yes, because, you know, but you turned that ar around. I won't speak for you, but I just thought yes. it might be worth that's, saying that's again. That's a great point. Yeah. So um, I would say. I picked not people that I, okay. Jealousy is kind of has a bad connotation, but people who right. were better at something than me, who I wanted their, their influence to rub off on me. So people like, um, as like Brittany, I didn't know her as well, but I knew that she was already writing full time. And I was like, I want to write full time. How'd you do that? You know? And like, I really admired that. And I had lots of things that I admired about everybody. And so things that you might could say that I was jealous of, but not people that I was jealous of and that like I wanted their career to go down so that I could beat them or something, but people who had traits that I would like to have. And so I wanted them to be an influence on me as I am moving forward with writing stuff. Yeah. And when Savannah reached out to me, like I knew that she had published already. So I was like, 
Yes, I wrote that off on me. Like, I need to get going. <laughs> What's this all about? Yes. Well, and well, this is a, yeah, this is a good point to bring this up because I was hella intimidated to come be part of this. And I mean, guys, like, I'm not intimidated by nothing, right? Like, fine, fine, bring it. But just because of Brittany's following and because Savannah had published and we weren't quite as close yet and you know like another person and because I can be a lot I can be loud and boisterous and you know like I can be a lot and I'm like oh my god like I, like the imposter syndrome was real <laughs> like at the beginning and you know I just kind of fought through it enough so that maybe that's encouraging for somebody out there too like it's not like ever going to never be imposter syndrome again even if you get a three-year-long plus mastermind group you know like there's still moments where you think you aren't enough of a writer where you think like, Oh, these people are all more writery than I am. And like, you're a writer. If you write, that's what Grant Faulkner says, right? NaNoWriMo CEO, you are a writer if you write. And it took a long time to not, not a super long time because Brittany's great because Holly's great because I already knew Savannah was great. But I mean, it took probably a couple months for me to feel really comfortable in this role of like, am I bringing enough value here? Like I definitely felt like the seesaw was a little out of balance for me at the beginning. And you know, that's just because of where I was at in my writer journey, you know, like I mentioned, I'm coming up on my five year writer anniversary. Like it is at the end of this week. So three years ago, you know, I was two and a half years in, I don't think I'd even quite hit a thousand tracked hours yet, which, a long time guys okay I work a long job <laughs> I work like 55 plus hours a week so I have to fit it in around um but you know like it just it takes time and it was uh just like a really great growth opportunity for me like that was what I wanted I wanted to grow and I knew that this was why I was put here I was put here to write and if for no other reason than I wanted to know other writers if you want to be a writer if you want to you know learn from writers you have to be around writers <laughs> you have to be around what you want to learn from and so i was willing to be uncomfortable and vulnerable there's a buzzword for the eight you know vulnerable. um <laughs> as i say with a frown <laughs> but so like if it's not the right fit at first that's okay but don't let yourself doubt make you not start because you'll never know if it's the right fit or not if you let yourself be intimidated out of it. Like, don't take yourself out of the game before, you know? Yes. And Alicia brings so much to our group, it's insane. Like, I could not imagine this group without her. So to hear her talk about, like, not feeling like she's, like, at least previously, like, she was bringing enough value or whatever, I'm like, what? I know. So, I'm like, I'm going through like, what are you talking about? You're so valuable. Like, <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. You know, it's, it's, it is. Like, that's like, and that's part of it for me too, is the honesty. Right. And I don't think I was ever, like, I never like shied away from that and telling you girls and that like, it, it, it was intimidating for me. And because, you know, I just didn't know where we were going to go. And, you know, I like, had no publishing i had no anything like that but mm -hmm. you know i know people and i'm so thankful that these ladies were willing to take a chance on somebody who's a little bit newer than they were to the journey and you know like that's something we can all do for everybody we can all reach a hand back and help bring people along with us because there's room at this table for all of us you know yeah. the reading community if you are someone who reads you will read anything in the genre you like. You, like, I mean, you might find authors you don't like along the way, but you're gonna try. So there's <laughs> room at the table for everybody. And I have always believed that. So anytime anybody wants to talk mastermind stuff, DM me, I'll, I'll talk to you. <laughs> She'll send some Alicia-isms. Um, <laughs> Margaret says, hey, what a timely topic. So I'm wondering, did you just start a writer mastermind group? Ooh. I'm curious, or Ooh. we're looking into it. Um, and Alex says, iron sharpens iron. You really yep. um, have to have a good attitude to um, have a uh, really good attitude to have in this or really any industry. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's very yeah. true. You're learning to have our thick skin. 
Um, yeah, and Allie, that was definitely part of it for me is I was like, I want to be as sharp as I can be. And like, these ladies are the iron that I have accessible to me. And I would pick them, you know, like, heck yes. Like I can learn <laughs> so much from them. So I was totally selfish. <laughs> I want to be part of this because I want to learn from you all. Thank you guys. <laughs> So we did get a couple questions from Instagram. Brittany um, asked her Instagram followers. So we want to make sure that we address those, which I think we did some of them. Um, but Mevia writes and reads asks, is there a leader of the group? <laughs> so kind of, I started the group and I usually press start on the calls and I I try to keep us on track. Now, as we've gotten to be more friends, it's gotten to be a, li a little bit harder to stick to that 10 minute <laughs> goals discussion time. Um, but I kind of try to take the responsibility to keep us on track as much as I can. But I wouldn't really say that it, it's a, a leader thing so much. I mean, like we're all equals. I don't know anything more than anybody else does. It's just I that's just kind of the role I have. Like Holly ha is the scribe. So she writes down all of our goals. And um, it's just kind of how it fell into place. So I wouldn't really say that you have to have a leader. I mean, you just have to have somebody to start it. So you may have to take initiative to start it. But if you're like, if you don't like the idea of being a leader, like you don't have to like stay the leader or anything. Mm -hmm. You just have to reach out to people to get it rolling. Yeah. Right. I think you're like, have been like our initiator. You yeah, know, and a lot initiator. of things and facilitator. <laughs> and I yes, feel like yeah. there's all there's been times in all of our lives over the past three years, which makes sense because it's life, but like where we've been like I think some of us have been a little more proactive in yes. like, you know, hey, are we meeting this week? Like we're still meeting, right? Yeah. You know, and then some of us that have had more going on in life that have been like, oh shoot, you know, like I almost forgot, or like, oh, I really need a night off tonight. Like, is that okay, ladies? I'm not doing okay, mm -hmm. you know. And so, like, I feel like we've all over time with Savannah, like kind of paving the way for us and like showing us how to initiate and like facilitate, you know, it's like, if there is a, t a time where Savannah's maybe more busy or like whatever, like another person picks up the ball, you know, and like, it's yeah. just kind of a rotating, like shared thing too. Yeah, that's true. And um, the, uh, oh shoot, I had like two thoughts that like, <laughs> so I'm like, wait, what was, what was the first one I was gonna say? Um, about oh because you were talking about like hey if someone's like hey I'm not feeling good I'm gonna like like duck out or something and so then we'll all be like oh they they were the one in the hot seat hey do we want to just check in with goals or you just want to meet yeah. next week or yeah. message and uh, we use Facebook Messenger like just kind of give a quick check in through there so you know we have that flexibility too if someone's not feeling well or something comes up um, that we need to change. Um, which speaking of that we had to change completely change our day and time that we uh were meeting for our group um just recently this past year um does anyone want to go into i think we're going to go into why <laughs> i think part of it is like so life right happening i got pregnant and we were meeting at like in in our esp time zone it was like 9 15. 9.15 mm -hmm. for oh my two gosh. and a half years. That just sounds like midnight to me right now, you guys. <laughs> like, I just can't. So, like, if you were pregnant, like, mo a lot of us, I hear, like, have this thing where it hits, like, 6, 7 o'clock, and you're, like, falling asleep. So I'm, like, on the call with the ladies, like, kind of on my pillow. Like, okay, I'm, like, all right, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I think I was the impetus, but I think some of some a lot of our schedules were kind of shifting anyway. Cause I think the I think it was Wednesday night at 9 15 for like mm -hmm. ages was like the only time that all of us could work get together. Yeah. And then a lot of our schedule shifted. So when like I was like, you know, like maybe we could meet a little earlier. <laughs> um, then a lot of the girls were like, well, actually, I can do, you know, a different day and I can do a little earlier and blah, blah, blah. And, and it like kind of just melded and, and worked. But I think, yeah, I think it was me. You guys were like looking at me like, can you keep doing this? <laughs> like, are you okay? <laughs> It'd be like time to start. And Brittany would be like trying to wake up from the nap she took to try and engage. <laughs> I love that. And I think um, another 
good thing. I forget when we started doing this, if it was in 2021 or 2020, but um, we started making sure that we leave a couple minutes or we just go over a couple minutes um, at the end of each uh, mastermind group. And of course, this is totally like our own creation, but whoever was in the hot seat then, we ask for like prayer requests and then we kind of, we call praying, pray us out. Um, and so that's kind of another encouraging way that we end our mastermind group, which, you know, has nothing to do with any of our things, but it's kind of just like a very encouraging way to, to end, um, end the session. So that's something that we do. So there's that flexibility and like doing, like kind of doing what works for you. If it's like, Hey, let's do a, I don't know, a sprint like every other, you know, meeting or something which sometimes we do do that's what we do sometimes yeah when we're yeah. like somebody doesn't have something for the hot seat or it's like in the middle of nano we're just like hey do you guys want to sprint together instead <laughs> yeah especially during nano i noticed we do that just because yeah. we're all so focused like we're not necessarily like growing platforms or humans or you know whatever. <laughs> growing. <laughs> we're growing <laughs> during nano oh. necessarily <laughs> oh. <laughs> um let me see. So I just want to highlight Margaret said that she did just start a writer mastermind group, a new, a new tier on her Patreon. First new thing after a year plus under my belt. I think oh. I can add another new thing. Cool. Good for you. So fun. Good for you. How many people do you feel like you have in your group so far? Margaret, we would love to know that because we really like work well with four because it's like constant enough feedback. But I would be interested in hearing from somebody that even had a little bit of a bigger group and like how they structure that. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, because yeah, you, you can have a group of any size, but the more people right. there are, the harder it'll be to for everybody to share their feedback. And mm -hmm. then also there'll be fewer chances for the hot seat. So like we have one chance a month with all with us having four people. But if you've got five or six people, you're going to be going down to less than one chance a month for each yeah. person, which is fine. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, and if you're real chatty like us, it can be extra challenging. You may just need to allow extra time. <laughs> if you're going to have more than four people trying to talk about their goals in 10 minutes, just good luck. Good luck to you with that. You may just need to try to set aside a little extra time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she'll make her own thing. Like it's like a, it's a Patreon mastermind. So it's like kind of its own new structure. Yeah. Uh, she said she just launched it today. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Previously, it's been with three that. to five. Yeah. That would yeah. be interesting to hear, um, you know, how that goes and like what's yeah. different with your Patreon group. So that's cool. Yeah. My, I'm just laughing because <laughs> the 9.15, I'm like, yeah, that's when I'm starting to like get ready for bed. And there's been a couple days in the recent month where it's like eight o'clock and I'm like, oh, it's only eight. I'm so tired. I want to go to bed. Like, but it's too early. <laughs> I've been spending my evenings knitting as a true grandmother in a 20 something year old's body because my sister-in-law is about to have a baby next week yeah. and I want to knit her a baby blanket and I haven't gotten to it until recently. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a grandma with you. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm like, oh, I'm talking to people. I'm going to be awake in the <laughs> um, In case anybody doesn't know, I am the extrovert of our group. The only. <laughs> by, by the, I mean the extrovert. Yeah, group. I forgot about that. Whoa. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little better for me to like have it a little bit earlier because when I am like on things, I really need to not be talking to anyone after about 9 p.m. And that never happens. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. You know? <laughs> it's like 1, 2, 3 a.m. I'm awake. And so, yes, I, but the, this whole like I'm going to bed at 8 p.m., I'm like, never. I, when? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's rough but somehow like nano rimo says i'm a night owl with writing so i'm like huh i guess i am what uh teresa said i love the prayer idea prayer changes things and then maya asked do you all follow the same religion or is it more kind of generalized prayer um we're um all kind of like in different like stages because like i'm like I used to be super religious. I'm Christian. I don't go to church anymore, but I still believe in something. Um, 
Alicia's Catholic, and then I believe Savannah and Brittany are like just Christian non-denominational. Right. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. <laughs> just kind of generalized. <laughs> we are all under the Christian umbrella. So, uh, right. So that's another thing that I don't have judgment on is when I'm in, in the hot seat. So then I pray us out. I'm like, oh gosh, I haven't prayed out loud or prayed in a long time, but like I'm down for this. So yes. it was <laughs> another comfortable thing that I learned to um, be better at. <laughs> and I didn't no. actually know that everybody was of a yeah. similar religion when I reached out to everybody. That was another kind of happy accident that we found out. So like, it was really cool to find that out. And if if that's something that is really important to you, then you might want to try to look into that more or, you know, specifically pick people who have the same beliefs as you. Um, but sometimes it also just works out that way. And it kind of became from an organic thing for us because oh. of our friendship base, because we were asking for prayer requests on our polos or in our Facebook messenger. So then we kind of like when we were like restructuring kind of at the end of the year, we kind of take stock like, oh, yeah, this is working. Or like, can we start praying each other out? You know, like that was kind of a natural segue for us, too, because it was something that we had all grown comfortable enough to ask for in our other forms of communication. Yeah, so that's, yeah. yeah that's not something we started with like yeah. so that's another way yeah. that we've it was a year or more probably before right. we really shared all that because there there can just be so much judgment yeah. with those kind of things that that was definitely not something that we started right off the bat being right. really open about mm -hmm. yeah definitely. yes um oh thanks for the cheer of confidence I'll have to go back and watch the first 40 minutes. Yes, definitely. And then um, I had mentioned at the start, um, we had um, a how to create a mastermind group video in our first year um, of starting the group. So that also has some really good information as well. If you want to see what we all looked like two years ago, oh, that was so I had blonde hair. We're here, we're all smiling. smiling. At least pick the clip where we're all smiling because like one of the clips like we linked and it was like all of us are like, like not making a good face. <laughs> like, what is the problem? Because we spend way more time laughing than we do upset. Right? <laughs> like, how did this catch all four of us like RBF in it? <laughs> RBF in it. I'm using it. I'm using that. <laughs> There's the Alishaism for the night. The RBF in it. I think. Um, so, like the unless there's something else that we didn't talk about, like kind of the last thing I wanted to uh, us to kind of go through is like, how have we grown? Well, I know you kind of talked about that, Alicia, but like, how have we grown and changed? And what have we accomplished with the help of each other yeah. with this mastermind group? Um, and so I was like, it was fun for me to go back and see where I was at when we started the mastermind group, because I had literally just started querying my um, previous novel, uh, The Celestial Code, wow. which was a YA fantasy, I had started to query it um, right when we started. So I had all this time because I was like just waiting in the trenches. So that was when I'm like, this is the perfect time for me in the mastermind group to kind of do something authorpreneurial, like businessy. And so I came out, I, I created with their help, um, the Happy Balanced Writer workbook to find like work-life balance as a writer. And so like, I never would have come out with that if it weren't for these ladies. So, um, so that was really cool, but like, I've been through, um, starting three other manuscripts since then. Um, I stopped querying because I wasn't getting any interest from agents. Um, and like I said before, with, with struggling last year with finishing, um, editing my draft. And so like, it was weird to be like, wow, we started this before I queried like that feels like so, so long ago. Um, but it, but it's cool because it's like shown how much I've accomplished. And it's like, I've worked on like four manuscripts since we've been together, which is so cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's huge. I was gonna say, I guess the two biggest things for me, like I was gonna say two, but I think there's three because there's two that I thought of that they would nail me for not saying. And then there's one that I also thought of. So um, I started a YouTube channel at the honest, like serious encouragement of these ladies and other lives I had been on. 
um, because everybody was like, where is she? Where is Alicia? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, where's Alicia? Like, I didn't, like, it was nothing that was even in my mind. Now, there's not a lot on there, but, you know, it's there and things are coming and, you know, like, I'm excited that it's there. So that was a chance that I took based just on the encouragement of these ladies. And because it always used to start out with, like, Alicia, just show your face and say words. Like, that's all you have to do. People are going to want to listen to whatever you have to say. And I'm like, I don't even want to listen to what I have to say most of the time. <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't say it. It just means I, you know, I just didn't believe that that was a thing. But, you know, it's it's on a lot of our lives. They're like, where is she? Where is Alicia's channel? And so that was probably like the biggest thing. And then um, last year and the year before, I did double nano. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool um, to like double nano. And so last year was my fifth nano because I start like my first nano was before my one year, like right anniversary. It was like six or eight months in. Right. So it was like kind of crazy to like, I was like, well, I can't not try and double again this year. Um, and it was crazy. And, you know, like it was, so much fun because like there was just so much encouragement um for that and then one of the big things is like for me like personal goal wise is like i completed my first like in like a theme poetry collection mm. since we've been in the dandel i mean that's the dandelion collection you know and like just to like realize like like this is something i'm passionate about is poetry and i want that to be a thing for myself and like to help other poets and you know like so that was kind of like one of my like leveling ups too was just like completing you know a a poetry collection oh uh, thanks maya right uh, show your face and say words we haven't had to say that in a long time i forgot about that we used to say that all the time <laughs> they yeah. used to tell me it all the time they're like hello <laughs> yes yes margaret it is so a double nano is 100k so i did I did a little over that in 2020 and in 2021. In November. She's the crazy extrovert pantser. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. I'm not <laughs> in the points or two. I had no idea where it was going. <laughs> forgot about that. I forgot that that's that's people might be interested in knowing. <laughs> Just one piece of value that you bring to our group is yeah, like you're the you're the pantser where I think a lot of us like we have levels of pantsing, but I think most of us are the outliners mm -hmm. and just like the encouragement and like the Alicia isms and the going like full throttle on like hundred K nano is just like whew, setting the bar really high. <laughs> Thank, <Love> you. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. Brittany, you want to go next? Sure. Um, yeah. So since we started, I think the the earliest thing was coming out with my author website boot camp, which is the course that I have that you can take anytime. It takes you through, you know, from A to Z, like how to create your website from scratch and grow your newsletter and all kinds of stuff. And um, a couple of these ladies were in my original like time where I was running the boot camp live, um, like you know, doing the videos and having people like comment live and everything. And then these were the ladies that I was like bouncing off all the ideas off of when I was like, okay, I don't want this to just be something that I recreate every single time. I want it to be something that anybody can take at any time. Like, how can I do this? You know, what do you think of these ideas? What do you think of like this marketing strategy? What do you think of all this? And so, so much of that was like bounced off of this group and um, it continues to make, you know, money for me that I can then funnel into publishing my books um, and uh, it continues to help so many authors get their websites together. Like one author, uh, Janine, just uh, launched hers this week and it was so exciting. So yeah so stuff like that for sure business ventures or like youtube you know my youtube has grown from like a couple thousand to like eleven thousand um subscribers and i bounce like thumbnails off these ladies and video ideas and all that kind of stuff um and then the biggest thing i think within the the last year and has been going on this whole time is like finally getting a book published and um doing something that because I was pursuing um, traditional for a while with the same kind of story. And then I got this like idea to um, 
publish it as a ser serial series, um, which is basically like a, a TV show, but in book form and sort of breaking up the full novel into a bunch of episodes. And it was something that I've seen a few other authors do, but not a lot. So it was this group that I was like, do you guys think I could do this? Do you think like this works? Like, what do you think of this idea? And like these covers and like, you know, I was moving into self-publishing um, for the first time. And so got all the eBooks out and then got the paperback out just in January. And like the encouragement that I got and the feedback and like all that kind of stuff from this group was like so pivotal. And like there were months, especially when I was like still in the editing stages, you know, I think Holly's, you know, we'll just finish that up <laughs> recently. But I was, you know, I was just like, guys, I don't know if this is ever going to get done. You know, like I'm, I'm never going to finish this book. And like these ladies were like, you can do it. <laughs> you got this. Like, keep going. So <laughs> that was so, so helpful. Yes, so many wins. Oh, Teresa, I love thank your Thank you, course. Teresa. <laughs> Ooh, like, spoiler alert, new new courses in the works. Yes. <laughs> oh, can I do like a five second plug? Yes. <laughs> so um, if you've seen my serial, like me talking about my serials and like sharing on my YouTube channel how I did it, I've been playing with the idea of um, making a mini course for any authors that want to kind of go even deeper into how I wrote, uh, plotted, wrote, uh, edited, um, published and marketed my serial series and kind of do like a blueprint of that uh, for authors. So um, I brought that idea to these ladies just last week, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was just like, I think if, it, especially if it starts out small and it's like a mini course that I can build on over time, like I could maybe even get this out before my baby's here in June. Like, what do you think? And we bounced around the ideas and it was their encouragement, their first encouragement that like ideas and stuff that I was like, oh, hey, I think I'm going to try this. I'm going to do this. So it's in the works. So thanks, ladies. Yes. Be on the lookout. Woo. <laughs> yes. Um, Margaret said your rapid release video was so great. Just watched it like yesterday. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad <laughs> it helped. <helpful. laughs> I just remember, Brittany, when you brought that to us, I was like, yeah, of course this is going to work. This is exactly what Charles Dickens did. And yes. they were like, what? Because when the printing press, you know, was like new, you had to save up the amount of money that it took to go to the printing press. Like, you know, so like that's how Charles Dickens released a lot of stories, like Great Expectations and, you know, things like that. Like that's how he released them was in serial form. So I was like, yeah, this is going to work. Because like even though nobody like Brittany had heard of a couple people, like not a lot of people were doing it. But I'm like, I, I know 100 <laughs> percent <laughs> because it worked 200 years ago when we didn't have a, an iota of the technology you know right. so, so it was so exciting to like watch it come to fruition and be in like her her mind with it from the get-go with it and last but not least, Savannah. Yeah, so when we first started our mastermind group, my book, I had one book and it had this cover. Oh my gosh. And yeah, long, long ago, baby, baby cover. And I, um, my, I now have three books and they have way cooler covers. I'm just going to show them to you real so quick because pretty. they're gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, Ingrid, if you're still there. Thank you for these amazing covers. They're fantastic. Um, so uh, that was a huge thing. And just the, the I would say, like, you guys helped me have the audacity to do things that a lot of people would maybe not have thought that I could. Like, I took, I did, pursued a lot of education in public speaking, and I've taken courses in various things that have helped me a lot with author things. And like, I think it was Brittany that first recommended this book to me. Best book I have ever mm. read <laughs> in like relation to writing craft. Like I've got a bunch back here, best one ever. It's so good. And I'd seen it around, but I was like, oh, you know, it's another craft book, you know, whatever. But then because Brittany had read it and liked it so much and learned so much from it, I finally picked it up and it has helped me. I think I wrote four books. If we're counting rough drafts, I wrote four books before this. And after this, I've written 
in the area of like seven other books that I have like at least a rough draft of because it helped me write so much faster and have a cleaner idea to start with so that there's less stuff to fix later. So it's just, that's been a huge thing to help with speed, with writing. Yeah, we get those resources too. The resources, yeah. it, like it's harder to know what to do when there's so many options for different things you could focus on or different products or courses you could go with, but like hearing from people, ah, Ingrid, hello. <laughs> But having having people that I can trust recommend stuff to me that has worked well for them is just so helpful and helps me believe in it more. So I don't give up on it halfway through, you know, like like I was like, well, it worked for them. It has to work for me. I just need to try a little harder. And so, I mean, I've I don't know, publishing the books and pursuing more education in writing related stuff has just been really big. Um I know there's a lot more stuff, but I, I didn't write a list beforehand. So <laughs> is there anything obvious I'm forgetting you guys can think uh, of? Job change. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, yes. what, what did you do in November? <laughs> so I haven't actually officially announced this yet, but I left my full-time job. It's totally fine. I left my full-time job in November and I'm writing full-time and I'm not I'm not living full-time off of, oh no, Alicia. <laughs> I'll well, click her back in. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not living full time on writing money from the writing the books. I don't make very much from that yet, but through that and through everything I learned about websites and marketing and, um, content writing, I have started doing content writing for websites and I have completely replaced my old income, um, with, uh, writing related jobs, which is just really cool. And I couldn't have done that without you guys. Yes. And that's helped I'm me too. It's like, oh, on... then I... <laughs> I started using Upwork when like the grand panini happened and it was like, I wouldn't have known that if it weren't for you. And I got right. feedback on that in the group. And so you yeah. know, like building my profile and things like that. So yeah. there, there's so much I like forgot that like I benefited from this group. Yeah. I will say just if you are a pantser, I, there's got to be a couple in the comments somewhere. If you are a pantser, do not feel like Save the Cat writes a novel is not for you because I even use it. I just use it kind of on the back end of a draft. I kind of go through and I'm like, like I, because it feels too confining for me to do it with outlines, right? We've had many conversations about how I don't do that. So <laughs> I will go through it on the back side of it. And I'm like, okay, because it breaks it down into percentages for you, like where it should be. And I am almost always hitting where the beat should be in, you know, a draft, which is great. It's helpful, you know? So like, even if you're a pantser, like I am, or a pantser, like don't think it's not for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, awesome, gosh, we've accomplished, accomplished so much and, yeah, I'm so proud of us. Um, I have avoided it. Oh, there. Oh, yeah, you got some pantsers here. Yeah, you are interrupted. <laughs> Hi, <girl. laughs> Oh, you've got your legion there. <laughs> yeah, um, no, Maya, I use it on the back end, so um, it's definitely an incredibly valuable resource. And even as I'm pantsing and writing a draft, like right now, I'm like, okay, like pacing, I should be getting closer to hitting this next beat. So like, you know, I kind of have it like just back here. It's not, it's not here like it is for the other ladies, but it's just kind of like back here. Like maybe you want to think about it, but as an eight, I can't be told what to do. So, you know, it's like, hi, maybe you could give me some attention. So back in, back in work. <laughs> <laughs> or like if you're stuck, right? Yeah, I'm right, sure there's moments right. where you're just like, okay, where could this story go? And then you're just like, well, I think I'm like probably around here and like the beat. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe I want to do something that has to do with this beat, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she used back end too. Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, now, now you've got hashtag on Instagram, you can make your post. Hashtag Pantsers Unite. Hashtag yes. Extroverted Pantser. Like, there you go. <laughs> Tag me. <laughs> we'll all be friends. Yes, Margaret. Enneagram eight, wing seven. <laughs> <laughs> and Allie too. Oh my gosh. So many. What? Finally, I just needed this group. I'm like never like getting this many pantsers. I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, Margaret. Oh, she's 
Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> When's the next gathering? Well, so <laughs> the good thing is, is that, um, so it, tonight was my night in the hot seat. And I was like, hey, I had you guys on my channel before. Let's do this again. But um, a lot of times if we're in a slower season with projects or it's during NaNoWriMo or sometimes Camp NaNoWriMo, we will use our hot seat time to do writing sprints. So um, hopefully you will see all four of us on together um, again for many a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> and April writing motivation and productivity, which I have down below. Yes. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate everyone spending their morning, afternoon, or evening with us um, <laughs> and learning about how to uh, create a sustainable writer mastermind group. Again, if you have any questions um, after the fact, things that you think of after or while you're trying to create and troubleshoot your mastermind group, please leave them in the comments or message us um, on social media. We'd be more than happy to help. Um, Anything else you girls want to say before we sign off? Any last thoughts or anything? <laughs> one thought would be if you're going to reach out to some people to try to start a mastermind group, um, one thing to include is to kind of frame it as what it would bring to them. Don't just say, hey, I want to learn from you, which like it's, it's a compliment to want to learn from somebody, but it also can come across like you're the only one getting anything out of it. So you want to make sure that you're, um, you know, phrasing it as I think this is something that would be helpful to all concerned, you know, because you're stronger in this, I could bring this to the group, you know, make sure you're framing it something more along those lines. Because a lot of times if it if it seems like you're the only person who'd be getting anything out of it, people are busy, especially the the people that probably know a lot of things that you want to learn from. And if they see another person asking them for more of their time and energy, it might just be such an exhausting idea that they'll just be like, I can't do it. I'm sorry. So mm -hmm. in such a way as to what everybody can bring to the group and that it's something that everybody would benefit from and not just something that you want. And that is going to be more likely to help you find the those people and get a good response from them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if they know they're Enneagram going in, that might be really helpful because you don't want a group of all eights. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> we all have a different type um but you know so like that might be a good way to start like trying to find people and like as you're gathering information and like maybe like the first meeting is like a, hey get to know you talk to me about your enneagram if you know it you know or like your myers-briggs or whatever like that might help alleviate some of that like stranger danger you know <laughs> yeah, and you're i think like your goals for the group like where right. you kind of see like yeah. The next couple months going yeah. um just kind of getting that idea exactly yeah. and whether you're thinking specifically about critiquing writers or like critiquing each other's written work or more like what we do with the business mastermind kind of stuff right because mm -hmm. um, people may have different things that they're wanting so make sure that you kind of are sharing exactly what the goals would be for the group and you might even throw like a, a format in there like the 10 minutes for goals 40 minutes for the hot seat person and then the um 10 minutes for goals again uh yeah and i think um what you were saying savannah and then maya bringing this up is an important thing is that like yeah we have that flexibility but we're pretty we're pretty like on top of it with meeting every week it's not like mm -hmm. oh let's do this once a month and see how it goes or something it's like you know we yeah. are here for each other and that's that like kind of like it's just be become a part of our routine where it's like yeah like this is this is what we're doing and we see the value in it and it's helped us and like that helps us helps it to not fizzle out as well yeah i think the reason we talk about it so much is that it's not the regular you know like we're we're normally very Everybody shows up on time. If anybody's late, I mean, we, we might wait a couple minutes, but like we still try to be respectful of everybody's time and we try to finish as close to time as we can, which has been harder lately as we've gotten chattier. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, we, we're pretty, we want to be respectful of, of everybody's time. So some flexibility is there, but we're also not just like flippant about it. Like if, if somebody doesn't come one night, like it's very abnormal. Mm -hmm. without warning like if somebody doesn't come without warning it's that normal you know like, right yeah even, right. even with warning it's pretty yeah. rare um right. i think the only time there was no warning i think 
me and one other person have fallen asleep and slept through one before because of exhaustion. <laughs> you know, when I met for my mastermind group, it was after I got married because I wanted feedback. Um, yes, she did. On diversity is lit. <laughs> yes. I was doing that. And so I was I'm literally real. in the car, like hu newly new husband driving me home. I'm in the car on my phone and I'm like, in my dress and i'm like i just don't <laughs> want to miss this i wanted feedback and yeah so and like, like if, if some of us are running late driving we'll you know put the call on on our phones and obviously be safe if you're driving but we'll just listen to the call and interact right. with the call even if we're not looking at the video so that we can still be there and yeah. interact with each other during the meeting even if we're not able to like look at the phone because we're yeah. trying to finish getting home yeah. yeah i think it was diversity is lit holly i think it was like right before you were I starting it was. Was yeah, that's why i was like i really actually yes. do need feedback I yeah because <laughs> it was because we started in july and you got married in May. So that was probably diversity is lit. It was on a Wednesday. When and even yeah. when I've been on vacation, I've still gotten on the call. I think Christmas vacation is really the only time that we just all agree to not come. Yeah. Like if I'm, if I'm on vacation, I'll still hop on the call for an hour. Right. And if like one of us is on vacation, it's like, hey, I'm not going to make it next week, but I'm happy to take feedback on Marco Polo. You can send me something yeah. if you want my feedback. Like, And that's something that we work through too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We share Google Docs a lot because you mm -hmm. can go in and comment on them whenever and you can comment on each other's comments and those are super helpful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Holly, I think you've got us all top for dedication. <laughs> oh, setting down. For the BIPOC authors, it's important. <laughs> um, Ingrid said, well, it was a great stream. Love listening to you this hour. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great. Um, really appreciate you all for spending over an hour here with us. Um, and I appreciate my fellow mastermind group girls for hopping on with me tonight. I really appreciate it. It's so fun. Yeah, so please follow happy. these lovelies. They're linked down below. Um, I'd love to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> now that you found your people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and um, we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.